hell are. I lost, didn't I? I was exploring and here different index. Those are my favorite books. Wow. Left. I'd rather explore division.
and sucks in this play.
Then there is Snow Mountain. Just there. Then there is. Then there is the mountain again. What's the column with some weird spirits? Oh, 
Oh, and it's Valley. I see a mountains. To them there is no mountain. Death Valley in the south. White Mountains in the east. These are colored light spirits hanging around. If you can see them. Now where's the north? Oh, Owen's Valley. Ah. Hey, Quinn. So off we go. Then there is no mountain. Just there. Then there is. Then there is the mountain again. What's the colon with some real spirits?
May the blessings of Gaia be upon you. May her peace abide in you. May her presence illuminate your heart now and forevermore. May the blessings of Gaia be upon you. May its peace abide in you. May its presence illuminate your heart now and forevermore. May the blessings of Gaia be upon you. May her peace abide in you. May her presence illuminate your heart heart now and forevermore.
see here. Element and after element. The same for choosing colors. Six colors in all, one for each ring and the eye consciousness. Click twice to get a color to stick. Why should I pick colors? Because you can. Otherwise, they are random choices. Mm. Okay. Here we go again. Color and after image, okay. Ah, okay. Details, all right. Okay, I accept those colors.
is from a tower that was in Camp Creek before Water Sound was built. You can see the lake at, um, in Outfall here, and there's the gulf. There's Deer Lake State Park and one sea grove. It's thickly vegetated. Okay, let's go back. There were several of these platforms. This was on 30A. This was a building that you could go to to talk about the project. Uh, this is where you drove down here to this platform. Uh, okay. Up to that Camp Creek Lake.
Good. Oops. Dome. This is a dome named Bump. It's the skylight that was open to the stars. These are the foam paddles that form the structure. This the frame. It's the bamboo dome designed by R. Buckminster Fuller and later became the basis for the 5D brain cell. The floor of the third level where I did stained glass is right here, floor. Right here. This little semicircle.
back to channeling as I did when getting images for Holio. Ah, uh, you can stop this movie if you want to read all this. About Agar K. Lind, a vision. Ooh. Leo. Elizabeth. Caroling. Evelyn, my mother. Mary, my sister. Is she always like this or is she broadcasting for help? Again, you can read this. Stop and read it if you want. Mary Ellen. That's it. Yeah. Was, I wish I'd spent more time up the yeah, past I just put all the month and a half up here. So what panel are you putting in now? Um, I'm actually just working on the big leads, the soft lead okay. all around. It's going to slip the next panel in Okay. because we've got the top panel ready, but it needs a little more cutting. I need to go with you though because we're going to alter that. I'll be in it. We'll be in in just a minute. So Caleb, okay. he, he's a video person. And he's just good. <laughs> well, Patrick and Vicky have told me I need two things today for success. One is to let go of my expectations as to how it should be and was before. And two is to let go of my timeline. What is that piece used for? This one? Yeah. All kinds of things, mainly um, opening the lead. Um, when you're making a window, um, banging the lead into place, smoothing it. It's hard, very hard wood. And then when you probably saw when Mark was um, putting the wide lead up, up yeah. out there to install the panels, smooth the lead down. That is pretty terrifying, isn't it? Wow, oh yes. Focus on that one. Nope. Hi, I love you.
From the Frank Stanton Studios in Los Angeles, this is Marketplace. Where's the butterfly? It's beautiful in here, and it's there. There it is. Oop. Can't follow it close enough. Butterfly. Oh my god, no. I thought that was it. My butterfly it really likes the dark blue glass. Isn't that something? Whoa, it's over there. You know, the humidity from my eye is fogging up the eyepiece and I can't see the LED. Oh, no one likes clear glass too. Chasing a hummingbird forever. And finally, not being able to get it out, it just ran away from me. To me. The blessings of the baddest people you Never peace to abide in you If they hold present, illuminate your heart Now and forevermore Things of the goddess be upon you. Never peace 
confide in you. May her presence illuminate your heart now and forevermore. That's interesting. I wonder how that color works. The camera automatically adjusting, lightening up. I grew up with Holio's creation because I. <laughs> so tell me who you are. And... Okay. Um... The the whole dome itself is just completely psychedelic and magic. It's the dual meaning, the scientific. And the and you could almost experience. Um, some sort of a, a journey just by coming in here because So would you like to tell me something about how you feel about Holio coming to the farm school and other things? Yes. The Holio Dome is a magnificent contribution to the entire farm community. Thank you very much. Straight on the black, isn't it? Yeah. The color just flows. Yeah. Nice. Perfect. We're excited about <laughs> it. Polio is one of the most incredible gifts that the farm has ever received. Um, I've never seen any piece of art that resembles it as far as like the shape of the stained glass structure and I think it's just like the fact that it's round and then the element of color and healing the healing element of color coming into play is just amazing and I can't wait to just like bask in that color and healing and and um, it's just incredible that the children are going to be able to be around it and that you have given us such a deep gift that you get put so much work into. And um, I just really hope everybody in the community can see it and appreciate it for what it is because it, it's an incredible gift. Well, uh, that's just about how I'd like to, it to be received, so I guess I came to the right place. <laughs> Thanks. 40 hours a week. No, um, 24-7. <laughs> it was my life. <laughs> Where, out in California? No, I, well, I started in, in San Francisco, got the idea, moved to New York, in Staten Island. I did a lot of um, the images, you know, I did a lot of s sketches, paintings. I did a lot of research about what kind of frame to hold it up. You know, first I thought I might use plastics, but that didn't work out, so I used the medieval tradition of the armature and just leaded glass and then I after I got 20 panels I did I wanted to see how it looked up you know and those 20 weren't connected they were just like here and there so I had to move to California find a place to put up make the tube frame find a place to put it up that was in nature it couldn't be in the city it had to have good cosmic vibes and connections for the inspiration so I moved to Berkeley, and then I found a place up in Forestville and um, rented a hillside, basically, that with running water, and uh, that's where I finished it. The last two years were um, 72 through 74. I lived there I, in a little dome that I built to live in, and um, 
Then I took it down, moved to another place, a house that I bought in Monterio, and uh, put it up in my yard. It was up there for six years. Ooh. And uh, so it finally came down in 1982. Since 1982, it's 22 years, it's been in various storage rooms. Your name? He <laughs> <laughs> I'd say it wasn't gonna work. <laughs> Francesca collecting the oh, there sometimes you start shrieking at your volunteers. There's <laughs> our volunteer workers. <laughs> you have seven minutes left. Oh Talk my god. Party like there's no tomorrow. <laughs> But like this is sort of part of the hippie museum, I guess. And that is a original bus. Yeah. That came in the, the caravan and okay. brought the hippies here. And there is another. Now what's this called? Global Institute for Appropriate Technology. It's the Echo Village Training Center is part of that, I guess. Oh, here's a map. Look at this. I didn't know he had that. Echo Village Training Center. Yeah. Oh. Which is what I wanted to, to do, and I was so happy you invited me. And then I drove up from Florida and, and stayed in the room here mm -hmm. and um, got to know this place, which is incredible. Yeah. Yeah, well... This place is, um, is an attractor for lots of different kinds of people. And we get everyone from um, young hippie types wanting to find out what this is all about to college students and professors wanting to bring their classes to groups of elderly on elder hostel type tour to regular flow of international visitors who and you got into that flow. I mean, when you came, you landed. How's, how are the chickens today? Are they... We have 16 new ones. Did you know that? No. Are they hens? They're day olds. They're down at the... Uh, day uh, old chickens? Uh-huh. Chick, little chicks? Yeah, little baby chicks. Oh, wow. About the size of your thumb. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, about the size of your thumb. These are bannies, so they start with eggs that are about that big. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> He, he maintains this website. So this, where are we? Oh, there's the cistern camp. The buses are over there. Um, whatever they are. So, yeah, look at Oh, they, they got a solar um, pump. It's kind of nice. Nice to hear that. Cool little place. There's a peace hole in the middle. I don't know much about this garden, but I do know the school kids came up here at least once a week, three times a week or something. That was quite an ordeal. You could not get along with the rooster. No, well, I, I needed to get the ducks. I need to lure them in and then close this big gate. And it was so hard to move. Now he's got it swinging better, but it was... I had to get them all in there because the f if I didn't get them in there, then the foxes and stuff might kill them. So I was trying to, you know, round him up and he comes at me. Yeah. When you build a building, you in permaculture, I guess you take the what's there and you raise it up to the roof. This is a permaculture building, huh? Well, oh wow, it's a closed door. Oh wow, it's closed. I guess they're gonna burn it. I don't know. I wonder if this is closed for a reason. Well, we go. 
It's called Cobb Building and it's, it's mud and straw mixed. What was this ever used for? It's just a little kind of a cabin. It, it has, it's just being made. It hasn't, it's not done yet. Oh, I see. Well, they use glass. Yeah. Yeah, they made kind of stained glass out of bottles. See, it's got kind of a little niche, and then you could have like two people sleeping in here, like a sleeping rooms or something. Uh-huh. It's just sort of a little hangout, hobbit house. Yeah. Thing. You can see it in there, like bags that you just take the bags and you sort of sculpt your walls by l laying them around. I, is this a permaculture? Well, this is part of the Echo Village. Um, uh, it's a kind of, I forget what they call it, but a kind of building that won't, won't be damaging to earth and that uses less energy-intensive um, materials in it, you know, and more local materials. It does make the landscape look so green. And I think they saw these things from wood right on the land. Oh, and there's some of that just sculpted. Somebody said that they, this was just for training and techniques, and then they're going to tear it all down. Huh. That would be a job just to tear it down. Yeah. They did a lot of work in here. Isn't it huge? Yeah. I think it's sort of fabulous. I mean, I can't imagine living in it, but... It's fun to look at. Yeah, it's like yeah. a big sculpture, kind of. I could figure out something to do with it. Yeah. Except scare kids on Halloween. <laughs> I don't know what happened to the ducks. Oh, he said they. What? Does anybody live in there? In here. All the different houses, and you even got an outhouse. Outhouse. It's full of those hippies who came here from California. Wow. It's not focusing right. Huh? Good. Huh? Well, it's not focusing right. I don't know why. It's on automatic.
Is it? Is it? Is it? Something doesn't around it.
Wow. Product tab. Flow. Female. Signal. Female. Healing. Point. Buffalo. Or becomes bridge. Let's see. I don't know what this might mean, but I can study it later. COVID nineteen healing. It's not going to give me help. You know what the signals harvest point joy. Two signals right side by side. Wholeness. Then healing. Healing. This is a beautiful color. Priest.
Like the mind, da 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 da
Signals Skull Evolution E lobbying Wow Signal Evolution Skrull uh, This morning on, during the general uh, uh, midterm election uh, we were asked to leave the property at the church up here um, and uh, the reason that we were told to, to leave was that all the members of the church might not appreciate uh, who we were supporting as candidates. We don't have, have a problem leaving. Uh, we don't want to start any trouble with anybody. Um, so we just brought our stuff down here and set it up right here and this is fine with us. Well, we were just asked to uh, to move because, by the pastor because the church said uh, they uh, would lose their tax exempt status if they supported in Canada and they didn't want any signs up there. So we just complied and moved. This is the Point Washington voting place, and here is the blue line marking 100 feet where I'm not supposed to do anything. I was standing here holding my sign, and a church official. Uh, came out and told me that I was on their private property and I had to leave the grounds. What did you say? I told them uh, when a church is used as a polling place, it becomes uh, public property for that day. So you didn't leave? No, I'm still here. They're a traditional yes, polling uh, place too. I, I worked the same exact spot in 2004 election and with no problem. This is something new. One of the election officials came out and said I'm within the law as far as the, the polling people are, okay? Right, because you're I'm, over I'm 100 feet. outside feet. of the blue line, okay? Uh -huh. Apparently, in talking to the Democratic campaign headquarters, this is not an isolated incident. The other other churches are doing the same thing. They're telling people to stay off of their private property. My concern is if uh, this is going to be a problem with churches, they should not be used as polling places. Oh, this is this is in Walton County. Walton County, County, Florida. County Florida. So there are other churches in this jurisdiction? And they are also uh, telling all, all campaign workers to uh, move off the uh, church property. Did the police get involved, or was there any other? Not yet. Um, I don't know what's going to happen. Oh. Uh, 
This is our uh, campaign headquarters, and they just talked to Tallahassee, and they're going to tell you what uh, Tallahassee uh, told us uh, about the situation. What Sharon is saying is that she called Tallahassee Election Commission, correct? And uh, they said that uh, the church is paid uh, to use this polling place, correct? And they are, and, and they cannot, uh, uh, they have no right to chase this off their property during election day, is that correct? Okay. Oh, good. <laughs> I'm afraid the Constitutional Amendment, uh, the United States Constitution. Which is, which is a freedom of speech. The church opened their doors, go ahead, to become a public polling place. They lose individual rights to the property on this day, according to who? C-O-R-I is the lawyer's name. Pastor was unavailable for comment. Later, she invited the displaced campaign workers to return to their positions. I, Carolyn Geary, produced this video as a nonpartisan observer for election protection.
this is a wonderful landscape plant, and it has the uh, beautiful white blooms in the springtime. The humming bees, a uh, honey, why do I keep calling them humming bees? Honey bees love the blooms, and then it turns to a beautiful yellow fruit, green fruit, then to a yellow fruit, and then black. And all this fruit is gone. You see what the stalks were where it used to be there. It's a good food for wildlife. And in your landscape in your home, you would want to go in and just clean out the old palmetto rods because that is where your little friend, the pygmy rattler, likes to hang out. <laughs> so you don't want to leave too much cover because that's where he's going to hide. It makes it different from maybe some of the other state forest lands that, that the state's acquired. This was owned by St. Joe Company, and they... Um, they didn't pay much attention to this land, and this that was actually a good thing. It wasn't considered to be very productive land down by the coast. The trees didn't grow as quickly, and they had more productive lands in other places. So they really didn't pay much attention to it, and when they did come in and cut trees, they never really replanted anything, and that was actually a good thing, because typically industrial forestry, as it was practiced through most of the 20th century, involved a lot of herbicides, digging up the land. You basically destroyed all of your ground cover species. And then they went back in and planted trees. So you had trees there, but then you had nothing on the forest floor at all. We were very lucky here. Oh, yeah. St. Joe didn't, they didn't do that this kind of just past uh, land yeah. preparation. They were pretty so white. When the state forest it's got the land, all they had to do was put trees see. back on it again. All the ground cover, all this diversity of species is all still here because it, it's almost it would be almost impossible to ever put this back. Mm -hmm. It's much easier to plant trees back, and that's what they've been doing. And you know that that sign back there at the at the um, parking area, that one millionth Long Lake pine tree that they planted right there. And I don't remember, was that, what year did that say on there? Was it 99? 99. 99, okay. And they'd only had the state forest at that point for six or seven years, and they planted a million trees already at that time. And I don't know how many they planted. But we're really, really lucky that St. Joe didn't intensively try to cultivate this land because we have all these wonderful grounds, we have all these wonderful feet and more, and now the trees are coming back. And decades this is now, such a pretty fast.
I don't know where it is. Okay, now what have I done? Oh, I've got a way down up here. Not that much more. Mm-hmm. 
I'd say these are worth no highways oh, whatsoever. Yeah. Take a picture yeah, of it? Sure. Oh my god. Oh Nancy, isn't that something? Let me zoom in on it. I don't see that on any of the others. The flower? The, yeah, this. Oh, I mean the other plant? Oh, the other plants don't have this particular. This Guy. Well, that's the flower, and the other one is the leaf. That this is the leaf. Yeah. What's? Are you going to get eaten? Well, I wondered what would happen if I put a finger. in. I think that little insects get caught. On. Are there hairs in there? Way down. Oh. Huh. You want to try and get inside there? Yeah. But how? Oh wow. Yeah, that's it, all right. That's where the insect goes. Yeah. Let's see. Am I zoomed in? No, I'm zoomed out. Let's zoom in there. Mm. Let's see over here a little bit. Oh. It's getting fuzzy. Why is that? <laughs> Can't focus too close, so I don't know why. Mmm. Wow. <gasps> Oh, these are worth saving. I'd say these are worth no highways oh, whatsoever. Yeah, absolutely. They are exquisite. Yeah. I wonder why people don't grow them in their gardens. Yeah. Or do they? I, mean, I don't know. I've never seen one before. No. Oh, gosh. It's so wonderful to see the leaf and the flower and the little ones together. Yeah. The whole thing. The whole family. Yeah, that plant just epitomizes them. There's a nice clump over there. Oh, there's, yeah. They look like organs or something. Yeah, and there's Pipe one organs. lone one. What? Oh, just one. Hmm? Um, here's one that somebody stepped on. Really? Well, I mean, it's lying down. Oh. But it's still attached. And it's good. Nancy, plant doctor. <laughs> it's not going to last. You cannot get through up here. It's all wet. Oh. Yeah, because here's a whole lot more. And the flower came up. And then the leaves come. I should pan this whole area just to see the overview.
There's nothing in there. Let's see what I can see in here. Oh, I see little. Yeah. About four, four of them. Yeah. Ooh. Found it. Ooh, that's a pretty one. This one is red. I think maybe there's three kinds in here. No stem did you plant? <laughs> no, the other one had a stem, but it had that kind of green with the red marbling oh, instead of white okay. topped. It's a different okay. kind of top. Yeah. Is there anything in it? I can't even see it. Oh, there it is, jiggling. I'm still in. Too windy. According to my step counter, we have stepped about a mile. Really? About 2,000 steps. Easy to recognize it right away. Because two things, we don't want the kids being out of boats for the same Also, a lot of the others. Well, basically, what we're going to do today is we're going to uh, take the local students out, local high school students, and this is uh, OWC Collegiate High School, and they're going to go out and map the invasive exotic species for Eastern Lake. Once we get that information, we're going to turn it over to our partners at the Department of Environmental Protection, and they're going to develop a control plan for the species. So hopefully we can begin by the next uh, growing season, next spring, to begin to treat these things. So we'll see. But this is the first step. So uh, that's, that's your safety sales pitch. Um, we are going to get those life vests in just a second, but Scott, I think you want to go over uh, identification of the invasive exotic species. Right, right, and these guys, we saw most of you with Tova the last time we went to the class. <coughs> and you've had uh, some of these, I guess, in hand for a while now? Or yeah, they just, haven't seen them. Okay. This is a tree. This is the only tree that we're going to be looking for today. This one is, uh, the, what tree is this one? Do you remember? Chinese, what? I don't know, Chinese something. Chinese? Hollow tree, or what's the more common name? A popcorn tree. Okay, we won't see any popcorn today, but we will see the leaves, this bright green uh, leaf structure, kind of uh, uh, almost a heart shape. So cattails, popcorn trees, uh, and some torpedo grass. And the other one to know about is the Phragmites australis. Phragmites are the common reed, and it's a very tall plant. It'll be uh, taller than you are, and it'll be right on the shoreline. So it's the tallest shoreline grass that we have around here. Yeah, These are why is the water high in the legal transport? Because it's so prolific at, at reproducing. So that's the problem with invasive. Once they get a foothold, they tend to dominate uh, the native vegetation, and so we don't have that diversity like you see in a natural situation. And Scott, doesn't, isn't there a huge dollar amount attached to that as well? The, the sure. money that it takes to... Right. The, yeah, it costs a lot of money to, to manage those invasives too, and they'll never really, it's management, it's not, it's not really uh, uh, ever eradication. 
That's where I have you. No, no, no. Well, that's what I'm saying. We have fewer students than I originally told. We thought we had more students. We actually made it more students. We'll have someone on the boat that can help you with this. We need someone who's willing to operate the GPS system. Again, we've been here with this. We need someone who's willing to operate the GPS system. Um, and then someone else will have the waterproof notebook and they'll actually be reporting what plant species it is. So, for geographical information systems. And that's how these maps got produced. Oh, yeah? From, From the Walton County GIS office. <laughs> Everybody turn their GPS unit on so it can be. Okay, at one of your fields on there at the bottom that has the big one, go to your, tra change your, and then go to location, and it will give you latitude and longitude. We are, everybody, we are here. Take your little notebooks out and open to your first or second page. Where do you want to see? There, this, theirs will all look like this and have the symbols there, so tell them where you want okay. to Okay. Turn them this way. And this is how we're going to record our information. Um, I'm going to get the list of boat one, boat two, boat three. We have the rest of this to divide and conquer. First team down.
Oh, it's a fish? Looks like a wing to me. Oh. Oh, it's a huge fish. Thank you. 